So she was sitting in Starbucks the week before Christmas. She had her expensive coffee on her little table. And she had her electronic device out and she was making lists of the things that she needed to do in preparation for the coming holidays. And more particularly, she was preparing for the arrival of her brother and his wife and their three small children. She was going through the list one at a time, thinking, oh, I need to change the sheets in the guest room and get the boxes out of there. Got to take the turkey out of the freezer. Don't forget to take the turkey out of the freezer. I've got to go and do my shopping. I need to borrow some DVD, Disney DVDs for the children to watch so they don't get bored. I need to do my vacuuming and so on and so forth. And she's making this list, feeling the anxiety and feeling the tension of all the expectations that were coming with, her, with, with the, the arrival of her brother and the coming holiday. Suddenly her phone buzzed. She looked at it, she had a new text, and she recognized it was her brother. And she opened the text, and the text read, where are you? She wrote back, I'm at Starbucks. Where are you? And her brother responded and said, we're in your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> she had been ex expecting them the next day. And that's what was in her calendar. And she said, you can't be. I'm not expecting you until tomorrow. And she and he wrote back and said, we were expected today. So she runs out with her expensive coffee and her digital device, rushing home in a panic only to find, or to find the children and the family waiting for her with nothing having been done. That sounds like life for me sometimes, you know? <laughs> Anybody been there? Yeah. yeah. And that's the kind of life I think we all tend to lead. Sometimes we're a day behind, or we're all expecting things to be done tomorrow. It's all about tomorrow. We prepare for tomorrow. We organize for tomorrow. We procrastinate until tomorrow. Or the next day, or the next day, or the next day. Today, on this day, in the reign of Christ, as we refer to it, it is not about what is to happen tomorrow. It is about what our reality is right now, today. But one of the things I just want to touch base on, I have a little problem with the, with, the, with the title, The Reign of Christ. As I said years ago, it was referred to as The Reign of Christ the King. And that was considered a bit hierarchical and it's, you know, power structures and Christ as a king is not an image that I can relate to very well. But even the word reign, you know, if you look it up in the Bible, it says the reign is a royal rule. It is having authority over. It is a dominating power or influence. Now I have to say that in, in my relationship with, with God in Christ, that I don't feel as though Christ rules over me, or has authority over me, or is dominating me in any particular kind of way. That I would like to think that my relationship with God in Christ is one in which God is there to walk with me, to guide me, to mentor me, to challenge me, to push me, to encourage me, but not to reign over me. So we are living uh, in a day on the cusp of a new beginning in the season of Advent. We live our lives, as I say, for tomorrow often. But the reality is, is that Jesus has said to us many times in Scripture that his relationship with us, us is about now and today. In the nativity story, Jesus came to the shepherds and said, 
Today unto you I bring good news. Today I bring you good news that born in the city of David is the one Christ the Lord. Jesus, when he entered the synagogue for the first time, he took the scriptures from the book of Isaiah and he opened them up and he read from the scriptures. He rolled them back up and then he said to those that were hearing, Today, in your hearing, the scriptures are being fulfilled. And in our gospel reading today, today that we've just heard, it is one more commonly heard in the season of Lent and particularly Holy Week. Is the story of Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus is on the cross, and beside him on either side are criminals, which was not an uncommon sight that many would be crucified at the same time. And Jesus is talking and praying to his Father in heaven, and he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. They are not aware of what is happening presently. And he continues his conversation, and the thief on his left is condemning Jesus, but the thief on the right is saying that this man has done nothing wrong. And he says to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says to the man on his right, today, I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. As followers of Jesus, sometimes we think that our life is about preparation. It is about doing better. It is about working harder at being better. It is the exercising to be a Christian. So in that time, when the time comes tomorrow, we will be ready. That we spend an inordinate amount of time looking into the future. And often we say, you know, if I were just a little bit better at being a good person, being compassionate, being more caring, sending that email, sending that letter to the person, if I was just better at engaging in relationships, but I can do that tomorrow. I will work at that tomorrow. Because tomorrow will be a better day for me. But the reality for you and I is we are who we are today. And we are called to celebrate and be in relationship with God as we are today. And that our relationship with Christ is one that we are called to celebrate today and give thanks for. There's no need to prepare. There's no need to be better. There is no need to engage in attempting something new but who we are is the person God, God meant us to be today. And we need to give thanks for that gift of faith and the gift of life. So on this day, when we celebrate the relationship with Christ that we have as we are, we look forward to walking the journey with Jesus as we move towards the season of Christmas and the celebration of the birth of him who gave us life. Thanks be to God. Amen.